So hello everyone. Today we have a special guest on our channel. We have Arnabi. So Arnabi, would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, sure. So first of all, I want to thank you for inviting me to your channel. And so to introduce myself, uh, currently I'm working in Infosys as a specialist programmer. So I joined Infosys on 2020 as a digital specialist engineer, and then I converted my role to a specialist programmer. So I have around 1.5 years. And I also have one channel where, uh, YouTube channel, where I uh, generally make videos for coding interview preparation and all. And I have recently completed one full uh, series on how to prepare for specialist programmers. Yeah, I'll give a link to, the, to her channel in the description. You can check it out from there, wonderful channel. And now let's talk about what she's here for. So she's here for to tell us about how to become a power programmer at Infosys. So power, being a power programmer has been really booming. A lot of people have been wanting to become a power programmer at Infosys. So let's hear about your experience at first. How was it becoming a power programmer, your interview experience and everything in details? Yeah, sure. So this role is uh, introduced uh, very recently, like 2019 was the first batch of this uh, power programmer. Mm -hmm. So when uh, I was in final year, I came to know about one exam that is InfiTQ exam. Mm -hmm. And in this exam, uh, we will given two coding questions and some uh, DBMS and OOPS related MCQ questions. Mm -hmm. And if we pass, then we will be selected as software engineer and then we need to give another exam uh, to crack for either DAC or uh, specialist programmer role based on the performance. Okay. So at first I uh, go with that infi TQ exam. There was one thing that uh, we have only two uh, languages to be uh, to give the exam, either Python or uh, Java. So oh, I chose didn't Python. Have C++? No, no. For that <laughs> okay. particular exam, we had only Python or Java. Okay. So I uh, chose uh, Python and one thing was uh, good that uh, while like, giving exam, uh, they will give one uh, list of like uh, how, what are the functions and uh, libraries in the Python. Okay. So if, if someone just know Python and practice, uh, they can easily uh, give the exam with those uh, libraries. Yeah. And so I cleared the first test. Uh, I remember that the first co question was... Uh, uh, from a 2D matrix and the second question was uh, one application of DP. I don't remember the question, but mm -hmm. I remember it was a DP question. Yeah. So first question I completed and second question I gave 85%, uh, I mean 85% test case passed. Mm -hmm. And the DBMS and oops, uh, MCQ were fine for me. So I was like quite confident that I will be selected. And uh, they give the result on the same day. So yeah. on the exam hall, we came to know that uh, I am selected. And then the one who came to take the exam, they said like there will be uh, a one or two minutes interview. Only just interviewers, uh, when I went, he just uh, asked me, tell me some of the uh, application of IT industries. I said okay. like uh, like um, Google Maps we are using, WhatsApp, uh, the yeah. applications we are example. These are the examples. So um, then I like selected as a specially, uh, sorry, system engineer. And then uh, I got a test link after some days. And that test link is the specific test link. They, they do it for the selection for specialist programmer or power programmer okay. or DAC. So there will be three questions, one easy, one medium, and one hard. And here we can choose any language, C, C++, Python, uh, Java, anything. So that time I chose uh, C++ uh, for coding. And yeah. I remember I solved the first one and second one. And for the third one, uh, I was not able to solve it fully, but I solved some of them. Hmm. And then I got the mail that I am selected for digital specialist engineer for interview, a digital yeah. specialist inter um, engineer interview. Yeah. So in the interview, um, I remember they asked me two questions, two coding questions, like I have to tell them the approach and I can write the pseudo code in the pen and paper. Mm -hmm. So one question was uh, application of C algorithm and uh, another was uh, uh, DP, uh, that minimum coin change, uh, that kind of oh, okay, uh, okay. question. Yeah. yeah. And one thing I want to mention that Infosys, uh, uh, in, in specifically, specifically for this power programmer, they like the C algorithm mostly because I have seen many questions which are the application of the C algorithm. Okay. Yeah. So it's like a hint or a suggestion for the one who are going to give this yeah. exam. Learn C algorithm. Yeah. 
and uh, and ask me some some of the dvms and oops uh, question and i was selected for this uh, digital specialist engineer role and that time i also knew that uh, after uh, completing one year i can get one chance to become a specialist programmer inside infosys yeah so i joined in 2020 in september and then um, after completing around one year i got the mail that i will be eligible for this uh, for uh, to sit for the exam so okay. in that exam where uh, in uh, october and november there were two slots so i chose a november slot and the same exam pattern like easy one medium and one hard question okay. and this time i was able to solve all the three questions do you and, remember the topic of these question these three yeah, questions so the first uh, uh, question was uh, from uh, one question was from dp okay of uh, course uh, yeah and another was greedy i don't mm. remember the question but i had to sort the uh, array and do something i remember and the third question it was an application of sieve algorithm <laughs> okay yeah and okay. for the another batch like uh, in my batch there were two uh, exam uh, two batch uh, two section of exam happened and for okay. the another batch they got some graph and dp question okay, okay. yeah and after that uh, uh, like i got the mail because i uh, this time i solved all the three questions oh, and wow. i know yeah and i knew that uh, i will get a interview call hmm. so i learned that uh, from the uh, previous uh, experience that they they may ask uh, a um, serious kind of interview that hmm. they may ask to do some coding and all but this time i got a mail that it won't be a serious kind of interview it will be a formal discussion with some senior hmm. maybe they can ask about what we are doing what we are interested in so that kind of uh, like formal discussion round happened with me the one who called me and asked like what is my uh, expertise what i want to do uh, if i want to stay in my same project or not and what was my uh, training in infosys this kind of thing and i said like uh, i i love full stack developing i, I have interest in front end so he asked me some questions from angular so this kind of thing and then finally i got a mail that i am selected for specialist program so it took around one quarter of time to change the role okay so how can someone else become a power programmer would you give advice on if someone wants to become a power programmer what can they do so they can also become a power programmer like you became yeah sure so from infosys there are actually uh, many uh, such opportunities to become a power programmer so first thing suppose you are a fresher uh, you are yeah. in final year so infosys conduct two exam one is hack with np and another is invite eq the invite eq yeah. is the one i gave so in invite eq generally uh, we have only two language java and python but uh, in hack with np there are we can use any language so from the hack with np also one can go to this um, power programmer and also in fitq also they like directly one can become mm -hmm. power programmer yeah. and another thing is that uh, infosys sometimes uh, like even in a year or um, once or twice they do some off campus drive mm -hmm. so if someone has uh, one year or 1.5 year experience and want to uh, switch to infosys uh, so they can also like with that off campus drive they can uh, come to this power programmer and every time the question pattern of selecting for this specific uh, power programmer is same there will be three question hmm. one uh, easy one uh, medium and one hard question hmm. and suppose one can't become that power programmer suppose uh, he is a, a system engineer or digital specialist engineer so yeah. inside uh, infosys there is uh, one uh, program that is called bridge programming so every quarter they uh, held this uh, test for the uh, that beach program uh, so someone is eligible suppose uh, he has some 2 to 3 months experience or mm. training is done so he or she will be eligible for this uh, beach program uh, they can nominate themselves and once they are nominated uh, there will be exam the same pattern one easy one medium and one hard question and if uh, they clear then there will be either interview or formal discussion this uh, depends on their how much experience they have suppose one have already one year ex project in uh, experience so mostly they will go for the formal discussion like they will ask uh, 
about their project experience and all mm -hmm. and if someone is fresher or just joined then they will be mostly asked about their uh, like what was their uh, uh, coding or related this kind of question okay so for uh, becoming a power programmer like you said in this test where you have three question you have to solve pretty much all of them so that you have the chance of becoming a power programmer right yeah actually uh, some of my friends uh, i asked them hmm. so it's not that compulsory to, to solve all the three but uh, you have to make sure that you are solving at least two the easy and the medium one at least try to solve them and for the hard question try to solve at least two three uh, test cases uh, based on that now suppose the exam all uh, questions are really hard and no one could able to solve yeah. the hard question then uh, if someone is solving two question then they will easily get the chance one thing i should uh, i i want to mention that I have noticed that they have specific uh, patterns. This uh, I have also mentioned in uh, my channel. Uh, I have analyzed their quarterly questions. Like they are, uh, there you can expect one DP question. Mm -hmm. There can be one uh, graph question. Mm -hmm. Graph means not that uh, much like shortest path, uh, Dijkstra or Bellman for not that, but at least BFS, DFS mm -hmm. application. And um, there can be one question from uh, Siv because Siv is their favorite. Yeah. And number theory kind of questions and all. And I have also noticed one thing that the question uh, they have sometimes it look uh, like very much uh, tough, but they are actually a pattern of maths. Like maybe GCD of the whole array is the answer. Yeah. So this kind of question they ask even um, good knowledge of maths number theory is also important. But uh, I didn't uh, see any question um, question on linked list uh, till now, or any question from tree I didn't uh, see till now. So I can say one can uh, like exclude this uh, if they don't have time. Otherwise, I would suggest go go with all the data structures. But graph, DP, greedy, this kind of things, especially number theory, I see the algorithm, this kind of things are important. So do you have any tips to give about how to prepare DSA for these topics? Yeah, I can say that uh, uh, I have uh, personally prepared from lead code mm -hmm. and sometimes interview bit, but I didn't solve a lot of questions in interview bit. So in lead code, one can choose some specific topics like uh, uh, greedy uh, solving the greedy questions uh, dp questions in lead code graph questions uh, there are uh, they can also solve it and also they can go to uh, geeks for geeks and solve the uh, number theory questions uh, because i have seen a lot of good uh, question in uh, geeks for geeks uh, in number theory okay so i guess that covers pretty much everything about becoming a power programmer so thank you anabi for coming on my channel and sharing this knowledge with me and my subscribers and to anyone who wants to become a power programmer like take these tips seriously because you have a power programmer sitting in right in front of you so again thank you anabi for coming to my channel and sharing your journey thank and experience you. yeah thank you and thank you you also for inviting me yeah and again i'll give a link to her channel in the description you can check her channel out it's a great channel it's a growing channel and you won't regret it